Good morning. Um, thank you uh, for this second uh, podcast. Um, and we did one over a month ago, and that was about my involvement in work in Pakistan about cystic fibrosis and how I got involved in that process. And we thought we'll do it in three parts, and this is part two uh, a podcast, which will cover what I actually have been doing in Pakistan. And in part three to come, we'll discuss, we'll discuss some of the challenges that we are facing and how we need to take things forward uh, in the future, hopefully. So this is going to be the uh, work that I have done uh, in Pakistan over the last uh, about 20 years, nearly 20 years. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a sh um, share of my slides with, uh, you, with yourselves just to show you um, some of the things and I'll try not to overdo things, uh, but I just want you to feel how hard it is sometimes to get the local community and not only the patients, but also the medics involved in this process. So I shall uh, take through to you and tell you something about Pakistan and what I've been doing in different parts of Pakistan. Um, so this is my journey in Pakistan, starting from Pakistan, coming over to the UK, from Asia to Europe, uh, and having studied in the UK, and then hoping to contribute to improve the care of some of the patients with cystic fibrosis in Pakistan. I keep traveling back and fro in, that, uh, in these two countries. Uh, and it's a period of nearly two decades. And I thought um, I'll begin with saying what my objectives were for all this. And that was to raise the awareness of cystic fibrosis in Pakistan, uh, purely because that people abroad and people within Pakistan did not think that cystic fibrosis was such a common thing to occur. But as I had explained in my previous podcast that we are seeing the patients in UK uh, who were originally from Pakistan. And if those patients in UK had cystic fibrosis, they must be CF in Pakistan, but people weren't aware of it. So I thought I shall uh, raise the awareness of cystic fibrosis in Pakistan. And that was through education, traveling, giving lectures, training local uh, pediatricians and people, and hopefully trying to set up some local research to help the local community of medical uh, colleagues and also the patients. And over that time, the ultimate aim was going to, to improve the standards of care by setting up local CF services. And this is to get the local people, local medical colleagues involved in looking after these patients. Uh, and that is not only in patients when they are sick, but as a regular outpatient activity. So they can be seen regularly and preventative measures done to avoid them becoming ill to be in patients. And of course, cystic fibrosis is not just a doctor um, uh, job, it is also a multidisciplinary team and of which physiotherapists and dietitians are very important component of that team in addition to some of the psychological support. And of course, the lab network that supports uh, the services as well. So this is a multidisciplinary approach to the care and the ultimate aim was to improve the care of these patients uh, in Pakistan. And further considerations that I had in mind was to work towards providing access to the CF medicines uh, that we have in the West so that the local community of patients and families with cystic fibrosis, they can access the medicines at affordable prices. Uh, and also some of the equipment, for example, um, the uh, nebulizer devices or the vest, for example, which is used in America quite a lot, uh, and the nebulizer devices and other equipment that may be relevant to that. Um, so uh, make the import of those uh, more uh, accessible, uh, easy for the families to, to obtain. And of course, um, we all know that CF care is very expensive and therefore somehow support some of the needy families through their difficult times. So these were the main objectives in mind and I knew it's going to be tough because it was a new start and to change people's mindset takes long time to change their attitude towards these things as the healthcare system in Pakistan is totally different from the West uh, and therefore to attract people 
into looking after CF patients who, who demand time and the care and the loving and holding uh, approach. Um, that sometimes doesn't come across in the current healthcare uh, we have in Pakistan at the moment. So it was very important to be patient through that process and I knew it was going to take time, but I didn't actually think it would take as long as it has taken already. So these were the main objectives. And just to tell you where Pakistan is, Pakistan is in the Indian subcontinent in Asia. And this is a map of Pakistan. And as you can see, it's in different colors. And there are five main areas. And this is the Punjab area. And this is um, the consensus 2023, very recent uh, published pay, uh, uh, population numbers. Pakistan's 240 million. This is, I think, the fifth largest country by population in, in the world. Uh, China and India being first and second. So this is the fifth largest populated uh, country in the world. And what we see is that the Punjab, which you can see uh, here, this is the most populous area within Pakistan with about 60% to two thirds of the population living in, in um, Punjab itself. So this is the most populous area in Pakistan, followed by Sindh, which is at the bottom with about 55 million people. And then the Northern parts, which is the Hyber Pakhtunkhwa, which used to be called uh, Sarhad in the past, that's about 39, 40 million people. And then the Balochistan, which is the mountainous area, which uh, is along the borders along the Afghanistan and Iran, and that is 20 million people. And then there are the northern parts, and that is uh, the, the less populated area as well. So overall, there are about 240 million people living in Pakistan, and 50% of that population is childhood population as well, and the birth rates are quite high. There's about um, 7 million births um, a year which is a huge number. This is 10 times the number that we have in the UK, for example. So this is sort of over Pakistan. And what I did was I um, started my journey in Lahore, which is the provincial city of Punjab. That is where I started in 2004, and uh, when I was invited to give a lecture on cystic fibrosis by the Pakistan Pediatric Association. Um, and I'm thankful to my colleagues, a couple of colleagues that I had known uh, who had been through the training within our uh, UK centers, and I had built good friendship with them, and they remembered me that I was involved in CF. So, so they recommended me, and I got invited. Uh, and in particular, uh, I have uh, I love to name uh, my colleagues, Professor Masoud Sadiq, who is now leading uh, the largest, one of the largest children's hospital in in the world, I think, with. 1,200 beds uh, are there, and the occupancy is actually two or three children per bed because there's so, so many children there. So he's leading that hospital at the moment. And uh, so I started my journey from Lahore in 2004, uh, and this is the Lahore Children's Hospital, and there's a huge big building behind it as well. This is the front uh, outpatient area. Uh, and so as I say, this is a 1,200 bedded hospital with lots, lots of, uh, and most of pediatric subspecialties represented. Uh, and this is where uh, I started a um, uh, long time back. And I, I'll come back to this symposium theme, but this is one of the things that uh, we did after sort of talking through lots of lecture, lectures in different uh, parts of the country. And this was face-to-face -face contact that we had with the patients in March 2016, seven, seven years ago. And I'll come to that one. But in addition to... Um, the Lahore Center being there. I've traveled up to the northern part as well. I've been to Peshawar for educational uh, lectures as well. Islamabad to hold educational lectures as well as the cystic fibrosis clinics um, to Sagoda, which is down there. And that is again, wherever I've been, I made sure that there was educational component. There's a, a lecture for the medical colleagues as well, as well as the families to see them uh, clinically and also educate them as well. And then Lahore, as I said, there's lots of uh, visits I've done to Lahore. Faisalabad is the other country. And down at the bottom, um, Karachi. So these are the six major cities in Pakistan that I have routinely or regularly visited over the last uh, two decades. I'm hoping to travel to more places, uh, time allowed and how things progress. Uh, and I'll see how things go with that one. But 
through that time, I've concentrated not just on cystic fibrosis, because I think people get bored with that sort of thing. So I've, I've spoken about service development, for example. So um, back in 2012, this is 2012, when I actually gave a lecture and a talk on how to set up the high dependency, pediatric high dependency at the Lahore Children's Hospital, which was being built at that time. Um, and been expanded at that time, and they were, you know, extending their intensive care and developing high dependency. So I contributed in that in that way as well. And then I talked about asthma and allergies, etc., as well, so people didn't get bored. And then, of course, my major uh, uh, topic always used to be cystic fibrosis. And as you can you see these three slides? Um, they were they are all looking blue, and people started associating me with somebody who shows blue slides. I think they meant in a nice way rather than the other term that people tend to use. Um, but I thought, oh, I need to change the color to some extent. So I did then uh, change the color of the slides to different colors. And this is one of the lectures I, I, I delivered uh, last December. But overall, it's been a, a, a very educational visit to Pakistan and very clinical um, visits for the patients. And I'll tell you how then that developed into the patient context. Um, back in 2014, we then set up a WhatsApp uh, group. And I had families with cystic fibrosis added on to that group. And I supported them online. So they, for example, will call me on WhatsApp or their message. And then I'll respond to them um, to guide them and advise them to uh, see what to do. And through that one also, we had lots of doctors who got added. And currently our clinical group of uh, cystic fibrosis uh, has about 250 um, members in it, uh, at 40, about 40 doctors and professionals, healthcare professionals in it as well. And the rest are the families, the parents, and some adult CF uh, uh, people as well. So that, that group has grown to about 250 starting from a few people back in uh, 2014. And that group is still active. And that is where I spend a lot of my time giving clinical advice uh, to, to my um, uh, colleagues and also families with cystic fibrosis. And the patient contact after having sort of set up that group was back in 2016. And as you can see, these are uh, the four people, including myself here. And um, we had um, Karen, um, Carolyn Patchell, who was our CF dietitian at Birmingham Children's Hospital, and Julie Simpson on the left-hand side, who is our uh, pediatric CF physiotherapist, and Dr. Stish Rao, who is my consultant colleague at Birmingham Children's Hospital. So four of us, and uh, we said, okay, we'll go out there and we'll do educational program. And you can see that poster on the background, the cystic fibrosis educational workshop. And they call it workshop because it's hands-on sort of things of so physiotherapy techniques, et cetera, or inhaler techniques or all those things. And we sort of combined all that, that the workshop, we uh, combined into a clinical uh, aspects with uh, actually doing cystic fibrosis clinic as well as lecturing. And that was a whole two day event we did uh, on the 16th and 17th of March, 2020, 2016. And this was the first ever CF symposium or event at a national or big level in Pakistan. I'm proud to be part of that and be leading that. Uh, and I was very grateful to these, my colleagues who were, uh, who were very willing to come along. And people in Pakistan appreciated their presence as well. And you know, we sort of still have links. Of course, I work with them still, uh, but my some of the other colleagues still ask them for advice over that period as well. So that was our first clinical um, uh, contact with CF patients, although I have been in contact with WhatsApp and online for a longer period. And if uh, I show you, I think my slides got mumbled up here, but these are the slides that we got through the workshop. This person you can see, uh, Rafe was his name. He is still in Lahore. He was our first uh, eldest CF patient. And we thought if we're going to talk to the patients, we've got an adult person here who can give uh, patient's perspective to the people. So we started him in as, a, as a, a speaker as well. And he talked about his condition and he talked about the others and it was very welcomed by the people. And this is the whole the lecture theater. This lecture theater has expanded because they built a new one. But we had about over 100 people in that hall uh, attending the session. 
And so it was quite successful first ever CF symposium in Pakistan that we had uh, in Pakistan. And it was lovely to see those families. And there's five families who traveled from south of the country, from um, Karachi, to travel all the way to come to Lahore to actually see us. Uh, and I appreciated um, their dedication. And it also showed me the need um, for the CF families there, if they are willing to travel that long to get some help, then maybe we should make that more accessible to them. And only six months after I did this Lahore Symposium, I thought I owe the Karachi family something. And I actually visited Karachi myself. Um, and these are my the CF physio and the um, dietitian uh, with a couple of patients who are sisters, uh, both with cystic fibrosis um, and um, it's just sort of, I'm not showing you the other things, but we, we actually saw the patients, we did, went through the inhaler techniques, the physio techniques, all the devices, uh, and reviewed everything on there. And then in 2016, the same year I did that symposium, and say six months later, I thought I had to go to Karachi. And Karachi, they sort of bribed me with food. Um, they said, we'll put out the you know, best food you can. And this was just the lunch break. But at, in the evening, they took me to the beach side and we had excellent barbecue at the beach. So thank you, everybody there who uh, were there. And these are the people who actually had their own children with cystic fibrosis. I, in fact, had organized this 2016 session at Karachi with uh, one of the local hospitals. Um, and that was uh, about six months ahead. As I went to Lahore, Karachi wanted me to visit. So I said, OK, fine, I'll work with this. So organize with uh, the local hospital. Unfortunately, just three weeks before I was supposed to travel, they pulled out that they said they, they can't um, give me the space or the accommodation because um, they've got other activities going on. And I, it, it was uh, heartbreaking. But I said, right, I promise my families are waiting. I'm going to go. So this place that you can see um, was um, a building, some a friend's building, uh, which they were using these as offices, and we converted that into lecture theater and clinics um, with the physio and the dietitians from the local hospital to come and help. So we had room for physiotherapy, we had room for the dietitian, we had the clinician's room, and we had a bigger room, waiting area, and also the lecture theater. So we actually used that. We still went along and we said we'll do that. And this is the, that's the lecture theater, as it were. These are the families, the parents of the CF people. And in that time, I uh, saw those families. And you can see me standing behind the chair and not in front of the chair because my knees were playing up. I had really bad arthritis on my knees and I needed some support. Nobody realized there that that's the reason I was standing behind the chair, that I needed some support and subsequently had my knees replaced and I'm fine now. But that was the reason for standing behind the chair uh, that I needed to hold on to something. But it was a lovely time. Um, I saw lots of families and um, they were grateful and I was uh, really taken by their hosp hospitality as well. So we had lovely um, social contact, uh, good interaction with the patients and uh, develop that. And once we did that, uh, in Lahore, there was another family who came from Islamabad. And they said, well, if you go to Karachi, you need to come to Islamabad. So I said, fine, I'll come to Islamabad. And Islamabad, I didn't know anybody at that time who could give me hospital space, et cetera. So we booked, um, basically it was a, a restaurant uh, and we used that space to set up the clinic uh, and also then have to meal afterwards. Uh, and this is, and they're sort of sitting on sofas within a restaurant, seeing the CF family, and then seeing the other patients. So all those who belonged to that part of uh, Islamabad and were able to come, I accommodated them in that evening uh, session. And so there's one family, that's the other family, and this is the bigger hole, as you can see, and people got segregated to some extent, and they were wearing masks as well for infection control purposes. So it was overall quite good. Um, but I was really taken back by the people of uh, Karachi and the number of CF patients who were in Karachi who I couldn't see everybody in the first time. So I had to go back uh, two years later. Uh, and at this time, uh, Dr. Fred Urdin, one of the head of the department of pediatrics at the Indus Hospital, uh, he was very kind and he welcomed us to do the clinic in that hospital, which was a different one to the, to the one that I previously had spoken about. Um, and he gave us the space, he gave us the uh, staff uh, support, and he was there 
both days himself with me all through the day. Uh, and this is a charity run hospital. And I wanted some sort of charity run hospital so that it wasn't going to cost the patients anything at all. Although my original pay, uh, hospital that in 2016, I organized, that was a paying hospital, but the facility was going to be free for the patients, but it didn't work out that way. Uh, but I'm glad that we actually had a setup with Indus Hospital at that time. So I spent two whole days doing eight o'clock till seven o'clock work from teaching in the morning for an hour or two, followed by seeing the patients. Uh, and that was about 44 families or so in two days. Um, and that was the largest number of patients you know, that I've seen in sort of one particular session in one particular place. I've seen 20 odd in other places as well, 44 patients in two days. That was the large number. And when I spoke to one of the local doctors there, they said they've got lots of, they got hundreds of patients in there, but there was no clinics. They were actually coming to the hospital, the ordinary thing, mixing with the ordinary people. There wasn't a dedicated clinic at all. And that's what something I was wanting to set up. So this was the Indus Hospital 2018. This is the um, lecture I did in the morning. And there's some people who went back to the wards and these were the ones who stayed behind for the photograph, me in the center and to my right, Dr. Friedudin, who was the head of the Department of Pediatrics. And to the left on here, this is uh, Dr. Fatima Mir, who worked in, uh, or still works in Aga Khan Hospital as pediatric infectious uh, um, consultant there. So very useful. She's been seeing a lot of patients because you know they were getting chest infection, so she was seeing it. And I was glad that she was uh, able to come to me for a half a day during my two days there, sit with me, and we shared some of the patients as well as she brought some of her own patients. So it was really nice. And there was the other the sport network with the, with the Indus Hospital had provided. So it was a great opportunity. And I got local doctors there as well, just to come and train and see what was happening. So I was getting uh, local people involved in that process. And this is, you know, uh, two brothers who we saw, Dr. Fatma Mir, as I mentioned, and this guy with the beard, Dr. Donish, who I'm still in contact with. And in fact, we arranged for him to come to Birmingham Children's Hospital in Birmingham uh, for <coughs> one month to do uh, observation and training with us. So he came, he trained, and then he went back and he's seeing the CF patients now. And this is Dr. Fridudin standing on his left-hand side as well. So it was really, really nice to see the team working together and very dedicated people. And this was at the end of the clinic. Um, and then um, just to show you the other parts, the Sergoda was the other city I mentioned that I went. Um, and this was, again, this was in one of the hotels. Um, this was uh, a talk I did on um, cough. And, and I'm starting coughing now. And that's probably, I saw that cough coming up. But that was a lecture on cough. <laughs> this was a lecture on asthma. And that's why, again, set up in the restaurant. Um, so we had a meal afterwards. But that's me getting, I think there's about 40 local pediatricians. I was talking about asthma at that time. I just wanted to come and get involved and get to know people before I start talking about CF, which is a little more complex. So I wanted to, I always used to give them the option, what do they want me to talk about? But I will always mention cystic fibrosis in the background uh, when I was doing that. So that was um, uh, me in the middle, standing middle. This is uh, the uh, afterwards, and you can see that respiratory workshop, 11th of November 2018 was the date. And these are the other people who were involved in setting up that uh, clinic and teaching session, which went very well. Following that, it was my other, some families from uh, Faisalabad, and they wanted me to come there. And this is Professor um, uh, Aisha, Hinaya Aisha, who was the head of the department in Faisalabad, and she invited me. So this is a, in, a, in a hotel meeting room. Um, so we got the people, the medical people come over and started off as my usual educational lecture there. Uh, and then um, we went, my, I think it's not showing up, but that's, so we, we then had um, uh, patients as well, which I'm not showing you the picture, but we actually had the patients, uh, their educational program, food always, uh, hospi very hospitable people in Pakistan. So whenever you go, they'll offer you the food. Um, and you know, if anybody offers me food, I'll actually go. Um, so it's been great time uh, working with them. 
And then uh, very recently, uh, just to show you a few other um, places I visited, this is Pakistan Institute of Medical Sciences in Islamabad. And this is very recent um, in December, 2022, uh, when I went there. So this is basically, again, starting off with an educational uh, lecture where people were able to come and listen to me very first thing in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then we dispersed uh, and went, we did the clinic. Now, um, this clinic, as you can see, this is uh, uh, my helper, uh, really appreciate. This is another young doctor, and this is another new development that we had. So she is one of the doctors in Pakistan, actually working in the army, and she came to our unit at Brigham Children's Hospital for a two-year fellowship program to be trained in respiratory pediatrics, including cystic fibrosis. So she's been with us for two years and just went back a few months before uh, that uh, event that we had in uh, uh, Islamabad. And when I went there, she said, I want to come and sit with you all day during the clinic so I can get to know the patients who are in the area, as well as just to um, uh, get up to date again with what we're doing and what the problems are. So um, there was rooms next door with the physiotherapist and the dietitian. This was the clinician's room. They're sitting me there with her, helping me along, and the family is sitting there. So uh, again, a, a, a lovely time, a great time with that families. And went back to Sagoda uh, and just that was previously my lectures in Sagoda. This time I wanted to do cystic fibrosis in Sagoda. I said, you got your way. I want to do my way now as well. Um, so um, this is uh, um, Fajar Arshad Hospital. Fajar Arshad is one of my friends and uh, he, he has his own private hospital and this is his private hospital. But he also works in another hospital, the district headquarters hospital, which is a government hospital. Um, so I said that I want to do a clinic and he said, yes, come to uh, the district headquarters hospital and we'll uh, accommodate you there. Um, so uh, my patients from that area, um, we had more than the ones I could accommodate in one morning session at the DHQ hospital. So I said, look, I need the afternoon session as well because you know there are a few patients I'm not able to see in the morning, but I want to give them the time. And he very kindly then gave me the space and the staff of his private uh, hospital, uh, free of charge uh, in his hospital. So I did the morning at the district headquarters and I did the afternoon at his, and I repeated that last time I went as well. So I had very lovely people, very nice friends, very generous friends who had uh, given, given me all the accommodation and facilitated those uh, sessions for me. And at the end of the day, he actually put up this think one day academic session in collaboration with the Pakistan Pediatric Association uh, and you know just highlighted my some of my uh, photos and teaching and looking at the x-rays and seeing the patients. So this was really nice that there are people um, locally involved thinking about cystic fibrosis, able to talk to me if they feel that there is something that they want to discuss about the patient management. So very, very nice indeed. Uh, and some of those patients, uh, these are the slides that from my last visit in December uh, in uh, Sargoda. And this is what Hwaja Arshad sitting with me and he sat with me all through the clinic. I said, I want to learn as well what's happening. And this is exactly what I appreciated. People getting interested and seeing me what to do and then going back and doing it and keeping in touch with me to say, no, here we are, what do you think we should do? So it's been lovely. And it's my personal touch these patients that are being talking to over the phone, et cetera. Families come, they cuddle, they sit in my lap, and it's nice. And yes, of infection control measures, they are in place as well, by the way. Um, and these are some of the other families um, that who came and posed with me for the, uh, uh, the pictures. Uh, and this is the team. And Dr. Fajr Arshad, one of the uh, departmental nurses who were facilitating height, weights, and all those things. And the girl with the mask in black, she was my, uh, not my recruit, but I appreciate her input. She is the one who started doing her PhD in genetic uh, testing for cystic fibrosis in Pakistan as first of the major project as her PhD. Um, so she was uh, with me in the clinics in Sagoda, in uh, PIMS, Islamabad, and subsequently after this in Lahore and recruiting patients. And just to let you know that um, her preliminary work consisted, we got about 80 five patients now into her study. She needs about 100, so we'll get there. We got the patients there, but she hasn't been able to rec recruit them yet. But the um, first 21 patients saw, 
she's analyzed the results and she put in an abstract in the European Cystic Fibrosis Conference, which held last week, and it was accepted there. So we got the abstract abstracted in the European Cystic Fibrosis Conference, the uh, um, meeting last week, uh, and obviously the ongoing work. And we're hoping that we'll get results. And the results are that Pakistani patients have different mutations. They do have Delta F508, but they got other mutations as well. And I think that is the start of the work because it's a small number, but it will get more. Uh, and just talking about genetics, I subsequently have another colleague, uh, Dr. Danish, who I mentioned, who was with me in Karachi, and he came to Birmingham for a, a month. He has also now started the genetic testing through one of their uh, uh, research person as well. And um, they will be providing that to the patients, um, but he has managed to get 120 free tests for CF within our group or anybody. So yes, their hospital will be charging, but the first 120 tests that they will be offering will be free of charge. And they will cover quite a lot of my patients that are in group, in addition to those who actually already been screened in Lahore, Sagoda, and Islamabad. And so we'll have that genetics. So there is that aspect to it. The research is there. There are local people now doing all those things. And we start off the genetics because it is quite important from the modulator treatment that is now available, although currently not affordable in, in Pakistan. But from the genetic advice point of view, because there are families who did have their genetic mutation done and the subsequent had antenatal diagnosis to help them with planning the future pregnancy, etc. So it's been helpful in that aspect as well. Um, so those are the things that I've done, and you know, the, I mentioned genetic testing. Um, but now we also got a regular monthly multidisciplinary team cystic fibrosis clinic in Lahore. Uh, and that place, I visited Lahore, I visited more than any other places. I say my original contact was there, uh, Professor Sadiq was there, Professor Atour, who is another colleague of mine. They are both in her vice chancellors of two different uh, universities within Lahore. So they are influential that person and I'm trying to use their influence to some extent to promote my patients and their cause as well. So that's sort of the things that I've done in Pakistan over the time. And I thought I'll um, show you those slides. Uh, and then um, if there was anything um, in the future that I want to do, is really develop those things, get more people interested from other centers. And currently, Faisalabad is the center who's putting their hand up to say, we want to develop a multidisciplinary team as well. And I'll hopefully work with them, guide with them. And I owe visits to Karachi again, because I haven't been there now for five years. Um, so I need to go back. There was a COVID thing. And during the COVID uh, period, other development that we did was that we actually had online CF um, Zoom meetings, which we held every two weeks. And we have our own uh, YouTube channel um, with about 50 odd videos uploaded. These are mostly uh, in Urdu for the benefit of the families. They are aimed just above the level of ordinary families because I wanted to attract the junior doctors so they can use that as learning and as their CPD, the continuous education program type things. Um, so they can see those, they can learn something. So, so they aimed at junior doctors as well as the families. And then we got a YouTube resource um, with about 50 or 50 odd videos, which we'll keep adding. We will do that because currently they are long, the long videos sometimes. Some are about an hour long um, because their presentation part two is question and answer ones. Uh, and currently what I'm going to do, work with one of my CF patients from Jeddah, uh, Saudi Arabia, who's done a few programs before, and she's quite keen to say, uh, let's doc do a few more sessions, and I want to do through, like, how do you check saturation? What do they mean? Um, what are the significance of more cough or this and that? So she is guiding me now to some extent and will set up some programs. She wants me to do um, chest infections and why do we get it? How do we treat it? How we can prevent it? So I'm, I'm, so I'm working with her. Um, so we'll get more videos uploaded for the benefit of the population there and see how things go. So this is in a nutshell, uh, but very brief, but behind that, hours and hours and months work gone uh, through. 
Um, as I say, if people wish to go and visit, it's called Pakistan Cystic Fibrosis Sport Network, YouTube, and go there uh, and um, leave any messages there. If anybody wants to join the group or wants to join the WhatsApp group, leave the message there and I shall uh, get in touch with them. Um, so I think it's been a worthwhile. Um, it's been uh, nearly two decades, uh, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I see other people getting uh, involved in it as well. And the more the merrier, I, I say. Uh, and hopefully by the end, we will get improved care for our patients. We'll have improved facilities of patients. We hope to get more medications and facilities in, in that aspect as well. And linking with the international community of CF organizations and people so that the disparity between the care between the West and the East we can equalize that or uh, take away some of that because I think all patients deserve to have the good standard care wherever they are. And I think that is my ultimate aim. That's what I would like to do. In our next po uh, podcast, I will go through some of the difficulties the families face, the difficulties the medics face, and some suggestions on how to come about and how we can perhaps uh, link in with the West and ask them support uh, on that front as well. So we'll see you next time we'll see you. Uh, but it's been a great journey. It's been a tiring journey, but I'm not tired yet. I'm not giving up. Uh, I'll carry on working. So thank you very much uh, for listening to me. Have a good evening and a good morning and a good day.